make me sick? I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you're having a lovely day. You may or may not have noticed that people in the US are currently playing their PS5s. Also Canada, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, South Korea and Singapore. If like me you're from the UK or Europe, you still have most of the week to go before you can get your hands on the giant fucker. So let's not focus on the fun that they're having across the pond. Let's focus on what's in store for us this coming Thursday. So with that in mind today I'm asking a very simple question. What games can I play on launch day? If you want to get your hands on one of these awesome packages sent to us courtesy of the Yorkshire Vapor, all you have to do this week is be subscribed to the channel, like this video and comment this in the comments section and a winner will be picked at random. So here it is, every game that you will be able to play come the 19th of November. Starting with first party titles, Astro's Playroom. Now this comes pre-installed on the PS5 and is listed as a direct sequel to Astro Bot Rescue Mission. Realistically though, this game is basically a tech demo to introduce you to the PS5's graphics and features. It looks pretty fun, but I wouldn't expect too much from it. Likewise though, it's absolutely free and comes preloaded on the console, so I can't complain. Demon's Souls. This is one of a handful of exclusive titles that are exclusively PS5. What I mean by that is you can't play these anywhere else. They won't be available on Xbox and there won't be a PS4 version coming. Now, it's important to note that this is a remake of a game of the same name, which was released in 2009. Reports suggest the game has stayed faithful to the original, which is music to the ears of longtime fans, and dissonance in the ears of those just now realising that they spent 70 quid on a 4K reskin of an 11 year old game. Nonetheless, this is probably the most graphically impressive of the launch titles, and definitely worth picking up. Spider-Man Miles Morales. This game is kind of the poster boy for the PS5. Like, if you bought the PS5 and you didn't know this game existed, then you likely bought a PS5 by mistake. Or you have way too much money. Sony are adamant that this is a full release, but this game stinks of Uncharted Lost Legacy or Far Cry New Dawn. It's bigger than a DLC, but shorter than a full release. Worth noting if you haven't played the original, there's also an Ultimate Edition which includes a copy of Marvel's Spider-Man remastered for the PS5. So if you haven't played it, the Ultimate Edition is a no-brainer. And the last first party title available on launch day is Sackboy A Big Adventure. Unlike the others though, this one is also available on the PS4. It's brought to us by Sumo Games who are responsible for renowned hits such as Snooker and Super Rubber Dub. Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> they have made some decent games. I can't help but assume that this one's just a weak and cater Young Gamers 2 title. It looks reasonable, but I can't imagine it's going to blow anyone's socks off. I mean, I'm probably going to end up buying it though. On to the third party titles then. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Off the back of Odyssey, a standard has been set, so there are high expectations for this game. Although early reports suggest mixed reviews with some saying it's kind of buggy and kind of boring while others are singing its praises. In my experience though, games that review like this tend to be just straight through the middle. If you're an Assassin's Creed fan, this will be top of your list but I'll probably be waiting before I pick this one up. Borderlands 3. So obviously this game has been out on the PS4 for over a year now so I don't think 2K and Gearbox are expecting people to be queuing up for it. One thing you should know though is that if you already own the game, 2K are offering a free upgrade to the PS5 version. Plus your save file and any DLC that you own will come with you. PS5 version supports 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. Bug snacks. They knew. They knew that this was going to be the game. The must have game of the next generation. Amidst fears that stores will be bum rushed by thousands of doting fans inevitably raising the R rating and overwhelming our NHS, Sony made the decision to make this game free for all PS Plus subscribers. This game is a pure meme and it knows it. I still have no fucking clue what you're supposed to do but I cannot wait to try this out. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. 
there's not a lot for me to say about this one. If you play video games, you know Call of Duty. If you don't play video games, you also know Call of Duty. It's Call of Duty. Sometimes they're fantastic, and other times they're trash. While Sony couldn't clinch full exclusivity on this one, they've managed to secure a timed exclusivity deal on Zombies mode, meaning that until the 1st of November 2021, the PS4 or the PS5 are the only places that you can play Zombies. Dead by Daylight. This is another one that's been out for a number of years now, four years to be precise, but the game is receiving a ray tracing upgrade and will be playable at 4K in 60 FPS. It's also another one that's offering a free upgrade, so if you own the PS4 version, you can upgrade for free to the PS5 version. Plus, if you have the headset, you can listen to the toxic community tell you to go kill yourself in Sony Tempest's 3D audio. Devil May Cry Special Edition. Another game that's already out, but unlike some of the others we've talked about, this isn't just a 4K upgrade. Devil May Cry 5 is getting the full premium remaster treatment, so you can expect new textures, new content to go alongside 4K resolution, ray tracing and support of up to 120 frames per second. These upgrades do come at a cost though, about 30 quid. So no free upgrade here I'm afraid. Dirt 5. This is one of two driving games that are available on launch day, and one thing that has to be said about driving games is that they always look spectacular. Racing games really aren't my thing, but if that's what you're into then Dirt 5 should definitely be your choice game until we get Gran Turismo 7 next year. Fortnite. You didn't honestly think that you could escape Fortnite, did you? Fortnite will be available to PS5 players with all new 4K resolution and 60 frames per second support. One thing worth noting is that your PS4 version won't run on the PS5, so the game will appear greyed out in your library. This isn't a glitch, your PS5 isn't broken, you haven't been banned for screaming expletives down the mic at 14 year olds. You just need to download the PS5 version, it's still free. Godfall. It's been self-labelled as a looter slasher, meaning this game should have a lot of legs in terms of content and therefore playtime, and if the combat lives up to how it looks, I can see myself losing hours and hours of my life to this game. It looks reminiscent of God of War combat. It looks, like, extremely precise. Gunya Fighter. Not really sure what this one's all about. Gunya Fighter is a multiplayer fighting game that was released on 2019 on the Switch. It looks like a Human Fall Flat-esque fighting game. I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I doubt that this is anyone's most anticipated next generation game. But it's a game nonetheless. King Oddball. Another one that I can't understand why it's made the official list. It's a game that came out in 2014, so just one year into the PS4's life cycle. Yet Sony have it on their list of current gen launch releases. It's also unclear about why this is a specific PS5 release and isn't just a case of your PS4 version will work on the PS5. I mean, is anyone going to be saying how much of a difference it makes playing this in 4K? I doubt it. Maneater is everyone's favourite flesh hungry shark RPG, or shark PG as they actually named it. The PS5 version will support native 4K and HDR, it'll have ray tracing and it'll have haptic feedback updates and fresh lighting effects supporting up to 60 frames per second performance. Also this one is another freebie upgrade so if you own the PS4 game it won't cost you a dime to unlock all these new features. NBA 2K21, it's an EA sports game, I mean take what you will from that statement. If you're into these games, they're like the cream of the crop, and if you aren't into them, you probably won't go anywhere near this one. This one is also available on the PS4, but the next-gen version apparently comes with next-gen lighting and textures. And according to Games Radar, it feels like you're standing on the court, if that's the immersion that you're looking for. No Man's Sky. Hello Games Disaster Turned Redemption Story will be available to play on launch day with an impressive looking next gen upgrade supporting 32 person multiplayer, improved volumetrics, 4K resolution and all that jazz. And to be fair to them, the trailer showing off the upgrades looked incredibly impressive, unless of course they're bullshitting us again. Observer System Redux. Observer was an award winning cyberpunk dystopian thriller that was released in 2017. System Redux is a full remaster boasting new character models and animations, updated environmental textures, 4K resolution, ray tracing and HDR lighting, plus three new missions exclusive to this version. 
Overcooked All You Can Eat. It's a remastered version of Overcooked and Overcooked 2, supporting 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. New levels, chefs and skins, plus online play is finally available for the Overcooked 1 levels. This game is like the ultimate co-op fun. It's not going to blow your mind or push the PS5 to its limits, but this game is a lot of fun. The Pathless. IndieWire describes this game as Journey meets Breath of the Wild. It looks like the traversal could be a lot of fun and very satisfying. Again, it's not going to be the next big thing and it's not going to make you say, wow, this is next gen at its finest. But nonetheless, it's a brand new game and something to play. Planet Coaster. Planet Coaster was released in 2016 for the PC and claims to be the premium choice for virtual roller coaster building. The PS5 version has been optimised for use with the DualSense controller. What that means exactly, I'm not too sure. There's the usual visual upgrades for this version, although it's kind of not an upgrade because the PC version already sported unlocked frame rate and 4K support. Warhammer Chaos Bane Slayer Edition. This is another that released last year, but it's already getting the Redux treatment. If you don't know this game, it's a Diablo style dungeon crawler. It only came out last year, so graphically I wouldn't be expecting too many changes. The Slayer Edition though, also includes all existing content plus DLC and a brand new class. Watch Dogs Legion. The era of Watch Dogs began as an early release on the PlayStation 4 as perhaps an overly ambitious video game, but with Legion's coming as a launch title to the PlayStation 5, Ubisoft have again promised big, saying every single NPC in the game is actually a PC or a an NPC. What I'm trying to say is that everyone, literally everyone in the game's world is apparently playable with their own backstories. I think it's definitely worth checking out but maybe I'm going to let other people check it out first and that will influence my decision as to whether I'm going to wait till the price drops. And as long as this game isn't a flop, it's another exciting AAA title to add to your PS5 catalogue. WRC9 FIA World Rally Championship. This is exactly what it says on the tin, it's a rally game. It came out on PS4, Xbox One and Switch in September of this year, but PS5 owners will have exclusive access to a free day one upgrade to the next gen edition, spotting dynamic 4K resolution up to 60 frames per second. So that caps our list of games that are specifically for the PS5 or that come with PS5 upgrades. However, if you can't find anything in that list that tickles your fancy, PlayStation Plus subscribers will have exclusive access to the PS Plus collection. This includes some of the best games from the last generation. That means on day one you'll have access to Bloodborne, Days Gone, Detroit Become Human, God of War, Infamous Second Son, Ratchet and Clank, The Last Guardian, The Last of Us Remastered, Until Dawn, Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, Batman Arkham Knight, Battlefield 1, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Zombies Chronicles Edition, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, Fallout 4, Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition, Monster Hunter World, Mortal Kombat X, Persona 5 and Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. And if you still can't find anything to play on day one of PlayStation 5, then worry not. At launch, the PlayStation 5 will be backwards compatible with over 99% of the 4,000 and something games that were released on the PlayStation 4. I know that that's a bit of a wishy-washy statement, but let's put it like this. If Sony are telling the truth, then any PlayStation 4 game that you have lying around the house has a 99% chance at least of being able to work fine and play as normal when you pop it in your PS5. All in all, there's absolutely no excuse to be bored on launch day with your PS5. So thanks for tuning in, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you in the next one.